Ibsan gecko is only active at night. In the darkness, the little predator looks for crickets and spiders. Like a frog's, its toes are webbed. This enables the lizard to seemingly fly across the dunes without sinking into the sand. But it also needs to be on the lookout. A sidewinding adder. Similar to desert elephants, beetles, and geckos, the snake has a hard life in the Namib. It has to hunt successfully to survive. Once it finds a good spot for an ambush, it goes to ground. The snake is a predator that lies in wait for its prey, relying completely on its camouflage. For the sensitive gecko, it's time to go. In the sun, it would quickly dehydrate. Here, too, webbed feet come in handy. The lizard uses its legs as scoops to quickly dig out astonishing underground passages. It can make tunnels one meter long into the ground. Here, it's safe. Up at ground level, another gecko isn't in quite such a hurry. With good reason. The fog is coming. The lizard's large, mirror-like eye surfaces allow the fog to condense here. At last, water. The waiting paid off. This morning, the sidewinding adder can have breakfast and get some liquid into the bargain. The Namibian winter is coming to an end, and with it, the mild climate brought by the fog. Relentless heat descends on the Huanyin Valley. 40 degrees Celsius in the shade, this is approaching the limit for even Clarissa's family. Elephants don't sweat, and so protect themselves against overheating by fanning their ears. But it seems too hot even for that. The heat is hard to bear for all the animals, but for the youngest, the sun can be lethal. Maya is really suffering. One tusk mobilizes all his efforts for one last attempt at an anna tree. But he no longer has the strength. 
Exhausted, he withdraws to the shade. During his long life, his legs have carried him more than 400,000 kilometers. As with most bull elephants, the last few steps he will take alone. Despite the heat, Clarissa can't afford to take a break. She urges her family to move on. Desert elephants have to spend up to 20 hours a day eating 200 kilos of plant material. As tiring as that may be, Clarissa's family have no choice. One young bull is already so exhausted that he sleeps through the signal to move off. He only wakes up when the other elephants are already out of sight. This show was created for you and your family to watch together. Welcome to Nacho Wild. It finally dawns on him that he really is all alone. Clarissa and the rest of the family have noticed his absence. The animals try to locate each other via smell using their trunks, which are extraordinarily sensitive. In the end, it's Maya who gives the decisive call. Now the straggler knows which way to go. The extremely dry period shows no sign of coming to an end. One week later, the heat and the elephants have combined to decimate the plant life in the Huanib Valley. Vultures take up positions on the trees on the edge of the valley. Their time will come when the other animals can find nothing more to eat. For Clarissa's family, a dead tree now becomes the sole source of food. In the desert, a tree of this size takes years to break down. And it's the elephants that turn it into food again for the other animals. They themselves only use 60% of what they eat. The rest they excrete undigested. In this way, they distribute seeds, like those of the Anna tree. Some animals, like the helmeted guinea fowl, take the majority of their food from what the elephants deposit. In times of scarcity, even the Huanib Valley baboons look for something edible in the elephant's dung. Old One Tusk has one more go at the wood. But elephant molars only grow back six times. One Tusk's teeth are worn out, and his attempt to eat wood the way he used to is doomed to failure. In other parts of Africa, older elephants seek out swamps where they can live for a while longer on softer leaves. Here, there is no such possibility. For Clarissa, too, the situation is becoming threatening. She and her family must leave the valley and seek food and water elsewhere. Other families join the trek. Only Clarissa's knowledge of hidden water sources can save them now.
Scarcely any animals are left in the valley. <laughs> 